somebody, at one point or another, will get thrown out of the window to his horrible death. It happened to politicians. It happened to a Roman Empire. Why, in 1948, it even happened to the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And now, it's happening to me. You guessed it right. I'm in Prague! Whoa! Capital City, one of the few big cities that was not bombed during the Second World War. This might explain why some of the buildings here are more than a thousand years old. Like, almost like a millennium, which is a lot. Prague is visited by four million tourists every year. For those of you who are into nourishing, balanced, light food, well, you've come to the wrong place. Luckily, I am not one of those people. The main ingredients in Czech cuisine are bread, potatoes, cabbage, and pork. However, in recent years, the Czech cuisine is experiencing a culinary awakening. This can be reflected in little, clever culinary inventions. So I have 24 hours to eat everything the streets of Prague have to offer, and who knows, maybe even invent a culinary creation myself. It's 7.17 in the morning, the perfect time to discuss the dawn of things. How did it all begin? Or to be more precise, how did the sandwich begin? Or to be even more precise, how did the open sandwich begin? Now, here in Prague, it's called Chlabicek, and it was invented in 1916 right here by Jan Pauker himself. Or was it? We are going to... There it is, the Chlabicek. Hello Hi. there. Can I come around? Yes, of course, come All around. Right, let's come around. So here, the Chlabicek was invented? Yes, exactly here. What is Chlabicek? Chlabicek is something like sandwich, but it's open. So it's really just like a sandwich, but it's open. Now, how didn't I think of that? How do you know it was invented here? Uh, from history. Jan Poker uh, has this shop. So how did he come up with this idea then? He had a one friend, he was a painter, mm -hmm. and he wanted some snack. Not, not something little, you know, like a canapé or something big like baguette. But oh. So he, he wanted something he could eat while he's painting, something that won't disturb his muse to kind of grab that. Wow, this is really good. Thank you. Wow. So basically here is where the snack was invented. So what kind of Chlabiceks do you have? This is the original. This is what Jan invented? Yeah. The original Chlab... What does Chlabicek mean? Uh, Chlabicek, it's uh, like little bread. Little bread? Bread, so... it's called Chlab. chlab in oh, Europe. so it's like a Chlabicek. Chlabicek, the original. Here we go. Mmm, very nice. Chlebicek with ham. So how many different chlebiceks do you have? Like 20 or 30 pieces. So what do you think is the secret of its success? I mean, apart from it being an open sandwich. The secret of our chlebicek is uh, homemade mayonnaise. All right, and it's the yeah. original recipe? Original recipe. Jan Pauker. All exactly. right. And you make it here? You make it here. Can I see how you make of it? Of course, I can All show right. it. Come on. All right, let's go. Hello. Hello. My name is Paul. Ishai. Nice to Hello. meet you. So let's let's see how it's done then. Okay. This eggs, eggs yolks. Uh huh. What's this then? Mustard. Okay. What's next? Worcester. This is vinegar. All right. Czech vinegar. Salt. Sugar. 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 Right, sugar. All right. So now what, what what's the next step then? Next step is oil. 
So how much mayonnaise do you make, say, a day? 500. Oh, 500 liters of mayonnaise. And we're off. Okay. All right. OK. I am about to invent my own flabby check. OK. Perfect. So how do we start, though? Take some bread. So Now maybe. you take the roast beef. All right. But actually, this is actually your chlabby check. It's not my chlabby check. I have a great idea. OK. My chlabby check okay. will be a closed chlabby check. <laughs> Aha. What do you think? This is a sandwich. Oh. Big sandwich. Two. You are a genius! It's Two. a double-decker chlabby check. OK. All right. We put the mayonnaise. And we've got our double-decker chlabby check invented right here in the place where Jan Pauke invented the original chlabby check, and it will be called the Ishai and Paul chlabby check. <sighs> when John Lennon was murdered, the young people of Prague wanted to mourn him. They spontaneously gathered along this wall, mourned together the death of this outstanding musician, and at the same time found the opportunity to rebel against the communist regime. The authorities erased these paintings, and every day they reappeared again and again. And it's legal to paint on this wall until this very day. Street food equals love. Well, John, I didn't know you personally, but I'm sure you love street food like I do. And maybe you'll give me some inspiration for my culinary invention. So, as early as the 80s, you all know the 80s, Samantha Fox, Nick Kershaw, and some other less iconic elements of Western culture started to penetrate the Czech Republic. Alongside this, the food started to change as well. One of the clear signs of these changes is the farmer's market that started to develop in Prague. Now, believe it or not, they actually sell there vegetables and fruits. So I've arranged for my friend Linka, who actually wrote 17 cookbooks and has a stand in the market to help me understand what exactly is going on there. <laughs> ah! Hello. How are you? So let's just and, let's dive yeah. in. OK, so we are on the farmer's market. Yes. It's the biggest one in Prague. All right. You will see here not only vegetables, mm -hmm. only, also meat, uh, cheeses, flowers. Here, you can see the most typical Czech dish, which are dumplings. The dumplings, which are definitely a major uh, part of the Czech yeah. cuisine. Here How do you, you call it in Czech? Uh, Kredliky. We eat also dumplings as a main dish, like that one or that one. Oh, this would be a main dish, but yeah. this is sweet. Yeah, actually, Czech Republic is maybe the only nation where you can eat sweets as for a, main, a dish. main dish. Yeah. Cover your eyes. Here we go. Do not try this okay, at home. Okay. <laughs> mm. You have to bite more in the filling. Go ahead. Uh. No, don't use a no. fork. No, 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 no. <laughs> you with me? You're doing it the street food. Here no, you go. No. Yes, yes. Klidně mu pomožte. Let's go. Very good, isn't it? Mm. Look into yeah, here. Yeah, you have to know your new block. dumpling friend. <laughs> All right. OK, thank you very much. But if you mm. could sit there, you could hear to the music. Polka. Polka. <laughs> polka. How do you dance the, the polka? The polka. You, you hold me like this, yes. I hold you like this, and then you, you go with two times and two times like this. Kinda and you silly. are turning and you are you are going like yeah, more, more faster. Oh, faster, <laughs> faster you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> wow. Look at the size of that bread. Maybe you can knock on the bread. <laughs> Hello. 
to actually the sound. You could tell if it's a good one by if the crust is yeah has yeah. a good uh, yeah. It has to be resonates. crusty, really. So let's buy one then. Yes. It has like three kilograms. What? You're gonna tear it. You're gonna do the. <laughs> uh, you can't tear it. <laughs> wow. Do and smell it. So what do you recognize here? It smells good. Very or good. Sometimes, or when you buy the bread in supermarket, it doesn't smell good. Really? Mm. It's better mm. with the butter mm -hmm. and with salt. Wow. <laughs> I'm happy. Flour. Yes. Yeah, you will be whole of the flour. Wow. Oh, what's this? Pizza. It. No, 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 it's not pizza. What is it then? It's sweet pie. And actually, it's uh, very traditional in northeast Moravia. So, here. what kind of fillings would you have? Here is um, poppy seeds, curd. Oh. Is it is it true that Czech Republic is uh, one poppy of the biggest poppy seed manufacturers yes, in the world? Sweet. Yeah. And this one, it's the most traditional one. Pears. All right, here we go. Curd. Another. Ingenious Czech invention. Yeah, it is. A sweet pizza. <laughs> I'm gonna taste it. Okay. Wow. Well, Lenka, I want to thank you so much for this tour. It was I hope great. you are not hungry now. Well, no, I'm not so... hungry. I've danced, I've yeah. eaten. The only thing was I was expecting a bit more vegetables. Um, well, we skipped the veg Actually, the vegetable is sleeping now because it's, oh, it's the cold, are a little sleeping. bit cold to vegetables. Yeah, but of we, course, of course. We don't want to disturb the vegetables. <laughs> at this time, you could uh, see and buy some potatoes, some root vegetables, but uh, the spring vegetables is coming to waking up. All right, so okay. see you in two weeks then. Okay. And thank you so much. It was great. And I'm off okay. to eat some more street food okay, good in luck. Prague. It is 1 and 12 minutes, lunchtime, but it's also time for a quiz. Now, how many people live in Prague? Well, everybody knows that, about 1,200,000 people. The real question is, how many street food trucks do you have in Prague? Think fast, think fast, think fast. Mm. The answer is one. One street food truck for 1,200,000 people. I wonder how they keep up. Hello there. Hello. I, I think I'm in the right place. The one and only street food truck in yeah, Prague. Yeah, the it's first one. The first one. And the only one. And the only one. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Paul, nice to meet you. Ishai, what brings you to open up a food truck? There's a big movement in, in everywhere else at the moment, and we're trying, Absolutely. To, we're trying to start it here. So you're a kind of street food pioneer, you might say. You might say, yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I come around and of course have you a can. look, come look have at a look. your grill there? Yeah. So how, how so does rents, this work? Well, it's like a, it's kind of like a Turkish grill. We're limited to what we can cook. OK. And it runs on, on charcoal. Should we get some more charcoal? I have to put some more charcoal yeah, yeah. around. That is you. perfect. Can I help you? You can help me. All right, let's get some more charcoal. That's ready. You want to put it in? Yeah, I'd love okay. to. There you go. It's hot. The yeah, charcoal here, ready. Hey, even All of it? Yeah, all of it. Yeah. That's it. It's not easy being a pioneer. Lots of dangers. Perfect. Do you want anything else? Uh, some fuel or anything? No, so we're, we're OK. The oil. All right, you take it easy. Nothing? No, all right. Yeah. So, so what's on the menu, then? And in my butcher, we make really good artisan sausages. Can they have um, a lot of jalapeno, uh -huh. shallots, garlic and coriander. There you go. Look at that. Nice, look at that. Here on the embankment in Prague. Here we go. Mmm. Fantastic bites I got there. Yeah? I got all the elements in one bite. I got the sausage, the egg, the salsa, the bun, and a bit of chili there. All right. Well, I want to thank you very much, and, and good luck. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. smell takes me. Mm. Hello there. This is Tredlo, right? Tredlo, yes. The famous cake. 
Can I have, uh, can I have huh? one? Yes, please. My first thread law. <laughs> Let's see. Please. Mmm. Very nice. Yeah. Um, is this very traditional? You're smiling at me in that way that says I have no idea what you're saying, is it? Hello, excuse me. Yes? Do you speak English? Yes, I do. My name's Ishai. My name is Martina. Since when is this recipe uh, part of the Czech uh, tradition? From a uh, really, very old time, so ancient. Really? But it was forgotten, and the owner of uh -huh. this stand uh, found it on some small markets, and he loved it. Mm -hmm. So he asked for the recipe, and he decided to make it for the people in Prague. Do you You're think right. I can maybe come around and, and you could show me how it's done? Yes, yes, you said yes. yes. You know English? <laughs> yes. I'm coming around. Hello there. Hello. Ah, so this is the, the Treadlow DJ stand. <laughs> so is that okay? It doesn't look <laughs> not so much. Oh, damn. And, and then you bottom. tuck it in in the end, yes. okay. So then you roll it in oh, yes. sugar, vanilla and almond. Sugar, almonds, okay. vanilla. The Pass block? it over, I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> 21, 32, 55. You... No, okay, so here we go. And it goes on to... Okay, so how many of, how many of these do you make a day? Just a 650. 650 thread loaves a day. Per day. Oh, can I can I try and take one out? I put on my thread law gloves. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, it's getting burnt. My thread law. Okay. Where should I? Here. Here. Okay. Yes. Ah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we saved it. But I am ready now to hit the streets of Prague with my own thread law. And I want to thank you very much for your help. Just maybe before I go, do you mind if I take a picture of us? Look into the thread law. One, two, three. Thread <laughs> This is the Charles Bridge. In 1393, a priest named Jan Nepomuk was thrown over for refusing to give the king his wife's confession details. This statue was placed here in his memory, and they say that if you put your hand on it and make a wish, it'll come true. I wish to have an ingenious culinary invention. Right, that's done then. I love those. All right, time for some true street Czech cuisine. Hello there. Hi. Hi. I'd like your most Czech dish. Uh, yeah, fried cheese. Fried cheese? Yes, very good. Very Go fried. ahead, thank you. Yes. Fried cheese. It's interesting. You have onion? Whatever you recommend. Onion. Yes, take me. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Hmm, that's really interesting. It's like a cheeseburger without the burger. Think about it. on my way to find some good friends of mine that are taking me to the oldest brewery in town. And who knows, maybe there I'll find my inspiration. But then again, what are the chances of me thinking straight in a place that beer is cheaper than water? <laughs> ha! Oh, got you. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Joseph, Milos, David, let's go. Is it true that beer is cheaper than water? Of course it's true. For us, the beer is more important than the water. Actually, Czechs, they drink more beer than water, yes. What, when you're thirsty, you say, gosh, I need a glass of beer. Of oh, sure. Yeah. We are going back to the history. So in the Middle Ages, for example, it was uh, dangerous to drink water that you don't know. But beer was actually boiled water, so it was safe to drink so you, it. So you drink beer for health reasons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Partly. 
Now we are going to a very special place. Okay. The oldest brewery in Prague. It's called Ufleku. Yes. But it's uh, making the beer since 15th century. This I know. The same so place. If it's since enough the for you. So 15th century. <laughs> of course. More than 500 years. They've been making beer Almost for the same 500 beer. years. Yes, and now we are going to drink and it. Now we're going to drink the same sure. beer. Yes, the same beer. That is unbelievable. Well, let's go there. Try and okay, this is fun. I am actually yeah. pouring beer in the oldest brewery in the Czech Republic. This is unbelievable. How many of these do they pour a day? Do you think 5,000 liters a day? 5,000 yeah. liters a day. Oh, no, help! All right, I think uh, I think we've done enough damage here, and we are off to our table. All right, here we go. God. This is really scary. Here it comes. All right. Nastravi, Nastravi. Mm. Wow. Very good. So this goes good with the, with our beer then. It's perfect. I mean, since I got to Prague, I knew that here. Prague have many inventions, culinary inventions. I guess some people